Hey there, it's me again. I've been gone for a good while due to job hunting, which is obviously extremely rewarding and not at all draining or anything like that. Anyways, I've been looking at random things on Pinterest and just trying simpler stuff out for myself because complicated stuff like Arknights just takes too much time. I came across this uh, time-lapse painting of an eye by Oppo0058, whom I'm assuming to be the artist due to the style similarities, but I cannot find the original time-lapse, though if anyone can confirm or deny, please leave a comment. Normally, I would just try it and move on, but I see that there's quite a lot of comments this time. Lots of people asking for a more in-depth tutorial, people making interesting comments, contemplating life choices, you know, the usual stuff. Some are a little spicy. Yeah. Anyways, I've decided to just make a quick video since it looks like there may be some value I can provide with one. I've also tried looking for videos on this style on YouTube, but didn't find anything. So here we are. In this video, I will be focusing on the iris so I don't have to edit as much. You'll likely start off with some line art of your own, but as for me, I'm just tracing off of my own first attempt to save some time. I wanted to do it again for the video since the first one was a little too low res. I'll have this file available for download so you can look at all the layers. For the iris, we start off with just a circle of base color. Notice the lack of lines, so just use the base color directly. The edges are blurred out, but I always prefer blocking colors using hard edges like G-Pen or the Lasso Fill then blur out the edges separately later using a blur tool. After that, we do the usual anime eye formula of darker and darker colors, each time I'm blocking in and then blurring. Note that the size of the blur tool determines how soft the edges get, and I use the much larger size for the middle of the eye compared to the edges along the sides. Next, we need to add in the pupil and a ring of dark color for detailing later. Again, you can just block this in and then blur the edges, or just paint it in using a soft edge brush. I used some tools to help me because I didn't want to spend 10 years perfecting my curves. Liquifying is snakes, make sure to vary the size and strength of your brush and try not to form any obvious patterns unless that is exactly what you want. I selected the pupil and then inverted the selection so I can work with the ring a little easier. You can of course just put them on separate layers in the first place. I am just stupid sometimes. Do the same thing to the pupil. I noticed in the time lapse that some of the spiky things are kind of blurred and only a few are really stretched out if you know what I mean. I hope you know what I mean. Anyways, I noticed some red coming from behind the pupil, so I just added another layer below, did a selection of the pupil, and then filled the layer underneath and added some blur. Next, we add some gradients and also some blue and purple to the top here. I am working off of a time lapse, so I do not know the exact process the original artist uses. It is very possible some of these colors are applied using different layer blending modes, but because there's no way for me to tell, except for some of them later, I'm mostly working on normal modes, and you can see that for yourself here. After this, there's some more simple stuff, a ring in the back, highlights, some brightening plus coloration in the bottom. I use a normal layer again, but I suspect the gradient in the bottom is probably done using some layer mode because adjustments like these tend to be. Moving on to the detailing, here's where I use my first set of glow dodge, mostly because I can see how the brushstrokes are interacting with the colors below. Usually for these, I would just leave it on max opacity, get in something brighter, and then turn it down later. You can probably tell from the brush strokes, but I want to be more verbose since it's a tutorial. Uh, the brushes I'm using has some opacity and brush size settings. The exact amount will be up to you. I know that some of you want to just see the exact settings I am using and copy it exactly, which is completely fine, but do know that the values of colors plus stuff like the size of the canvas will matter. So definitely spend some time to play around with it. Anyways, if you manage to follow this far, anything beyond this point is just more of the same thing. Using glow dodge layers for more details, overlay for color adjustments, adding more colors that play nice with your base eye color, adding more details by adding darker values to lighter values and vice versa. Honestly, even if you do just stop at this point in time, I think it'd be more than enough for an average anime painting since there usually isn't that many pixels for the eyes anyways. But of course, you're not here for something half-baked, so I went as far as I could following this rather pixelated time-lapse on Pinterest. I'll keep it short and concise because it's a lot of the same thing. Some overlay color adjustments for the bottom, liquefying the lighter colored ring because I forgot to, darkening and sharpening some of the spikes using G-Pen, painting in more highlights using glow dodge, some more detailing, lighter spot in the pupil, more sparkly stuff which, by the way, you can use the tone scraper or spray sub tool in the airbrush, or you can experiment around using textures and images.
I darken the top some more so there can be some more highlights later, painting in more details. Adding an overlay for some purples. And I thought that this part was pretty cool, I found that hard light mode seems to help achieve this sort of effect for the sides. A little more orange in the bottom of the eye. Also added a ring of orange underneath all of the layers of the eye, so that there's some bit of it popping out all the way around. It is very subtle, but having it just makes everything feels more colourful and refined. And that's basically kind of it. One last thing I thought was very useful is an overall color adjustment using an overlay layer over everything. There are definitely some differences compared to the original, but that is to be expected. This is literally the second time I've done this, and you will need a lot of time playing around to find something more unique. Please check out their Twitter. There are many, many, many more variations that's a lot more detailed, and I do not know what is being done. I would take a guess and say that they're probably using some custom brushes here, some custom textures there and then some interesting combinations of layer blending modes plus layer adjustments, but I just don't have enough experience to replicate any of these. Anyways, I hope someone somewhere learned something from this video somehow, sometime, or some way. Once again, the files are in the description, go play around with it, go practice and get better than your friends and make them feel bad for paying for art lessons. Mwahaha. Just kidding, go inspire them and keep them going. With AI taking over every inch of my damn screen, uh, we may just be part of the last group of humans learning to draw, so cheerful news. Uh, as usual, uh, leave a comment and or like and or like subscribe if you are a human. I may be a little inactive and sporadic, but I have a very personal reason for learning to art. So I'm going to be here until AGI takes over the world, after which I will still be doing art, but maybe with my consciousness uploaded into NVIDIA GTX 9090 or something. That's all for this video. Um, yeah.